This is a mechanism of disease map for type 4 hypersensitivity reactions. I'll be talking about the etiologies, the pathophysiology, and the manifestations of type 4 hypersensitivity reactions. This includes a number of conditions and diseases, as well as a tuberculosis test that all use the type 4 hypersensitivity pathophysiology. As a quick reminder, type 1 hypersensitivity was an allergic reaction. It was an immediate systemic histamine-mediated process. Type 2 was the cytotoxic effect. It was similar to type 4 in that it was direct attack against target cells, but it happened much faster than type 4. Type 3 was immune complex deposition, and type 4, if you were going to summarize it in a few words, is delayed response, a delayed reaction, as well as a cell-mediated reaction. So we'll see that T cells are involved and you're going to have a cytotoxic effect on your target cells, but in this case it takes one to three days for that effect to happen, one to three days for that inflammatory response. Let's get started. In the beginning, what starts the etiology for type 4 hypersensitivity is exposure to antigens. In some cases, you also have skin penetration at this stage. This isn't such as when you have like a poison ivy or poison oak exposure, or maybe exposure to some metals like nickel on a belt buckle, that antigen might penetrate the skin. In other cases, the antigen is already in your body through a microbial infection or just in an autoimmune process. In any case, when you have exposure to an antigen, the antigen is taken up into Langerhan cells. Remember, Langerhan cells are a type of antigen-presenting cell. So Langerhan cells are going to migrate to the lymph nodes, where in the lymph nodes, they'll form sensitized T cells that respond to that antigen you were, that, that antigen that you were exposed to. So now those T cells are going to be kind of primed to respond to that antigen. And when you have repeated contact with that antigen, two things are going to happen. You'll have CD4 plus T cells, which recognize the antigen on antigen presenting cells like Langerhans cells, but also dendritic cells and B cells. You'll also have CD8 plus T cells that recognize the antigen on somatic cells. The CD4 cells are also called helper T cells. The CD8 cells are also called killer T cells or cytotoxic T cells. These two work in slightly different ways. The CD8 cells are direct cell-mediated cytotoxicity. So they'll go out, they'll recognize the antigen on other cells in the body, non-immune somatic cells, and they'll directly cause destruction of the target cell. The CD4 helper cells release a bunch of inflammatory lymphokines whenever they see the antigen on an antigen-presenting cell. This recruits a bunch of macrophages, this um, interferon gamma and TNF alpha. They're very inflammatory lymphokines, cytokines, that recruit a bunch of macrophages, and then macrophages come in and phagocytose the target cells, and they eat them up and essentially cause destruction that way. So CD8 plus and CD4 plus T cells both end in direct destruction of the target cell. And this all was triggered by exposure to an, anti to, to an antigen. That exposure can happen through a number of different means. It can be environmental, it could be a toxin, it could be a medicine that a patient was prescribed, it can be infectious, a microbial infection, it could be part of their diet, and it can also be just immunological inside their body, an autoimmune process. We'll talk about several different cases of the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. First two on this list are probably the most prevalent forms of type 4 hypersensitivity. The first is allergic contact dermatitis. There are many allergens that can cause a contact dermatitis of the skin. Um, they're listed here. So some of the metals I've already mentioned, nickel, cobalt, and chromium. This is um, such as in a belt buckle, you might have a pattern of contact dermatitis around the patient's waist if they have a nickel belt buckle, for instance. A lot of perfumes, soaps, and cosmetics can cause this as well. Sometimes when people have an allergic reaction on their face, it happens just after they used a new acne medication or moisturizer that might have uh, triggered a reaction. Some plants cause this. The most common ones are poison oak, poison ivy, and poison sumac. They all contain this chemical urushiol, which uh, triggers the allergic contact dermatitis. Gloves can do it, specifically latex gloves and people who have latex allergies, and some chemical solvents and detergents can cause contact dermatitis as well. In general, in contact dermatitis, patients will have an itchy red papular rash. So it'll be pruritic and erythematous papular rash. And it usually appears one to two, maybe three days after the exposure. In more severe cases, they might have oozing vesicles as well, but that's not always the case. 
And lastly, what's worth mentioning is that the pattern of the rash can correspond to the exposure. So if a patient walks through a dense forest with a bunch of poison oak or poison ivy, they might have this allergic contact dermatitis around their legs. If they were scratching their legs or if they were kind of spreading the oil containing urushiol around their arms, they'll also have allergic contact dermatitis around their arms until they wash off this chemical. So um, if you use gloves on your hands, you'll have a reaction usually limited to your hands unless you're rubbing latex unintentionally on other parts of your body. So usually the, the pattern of the rash corresponds to the exposure, um, exactly where you're exposed to the allergen, to the antigen. The other common manifestation of type 4 hypersensitivity is tuberculin skin test. This is also called the PPD test, the purified protein derivative test, and also the Montu test. In this test, if you've had prior exposure to mycobacterium tuberculosis and you have a latent tuberculosis infection, you'll then have this test. You'll have a, a purified protein derivative, the PPD itself, injected under your skin on your forearm. So um, you'll create a wheel when you inject that PPD under your skin. And then over the course of two or three days, you'll have a T cell response. The T cells are stimulated and they'll infiltrate the site of infection where you injected that little wheel on your forearm. If you've had prior exposure to tuberculosis, you'll have a significant T cell reaction and you'll have a large palpable induration two to three days later. And we specifically have medical professionals, nurses or doctors check for this induration two to three days later because type four hypersensitivity is a delayed reaction. It does happen a few days after the exposure. So we need to give it time for that induration to form. Then depending on the size of the induration, you might be categorized as TB positive or TB negative. Um, again, this is for latent TB, and the categorization of how large the induration should be depends on the patient's exposures, whether they're homeless, whether they use IV drugs, whether they work in a healthcare setting. There's different thresholds based on <clears throat> all of those criteria. But in essence, it's a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, and you end up with a larger reaction on your, um, on your forearm if you've had tuberculosis before, if you've had that previous exposure to the antigen with all of this T cell priming. There are several autoimmune diseases that also undergo this type 4 hypersensitivity pathophysiology. This is not an exhaustive list. I've only listed some of the common ones and some of the well-established ones. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, for instance, results in destruction of the thyroid tissue. In the early stages of this disease, when you destroy the thyroid tissue, you're releasing a bunch of the thyroid hormone, which can um, essentially cause a thyrotoxicosis. It's called hashitoxicosis. And you'll have a transient hyperthyroidism with your normal hyperthyroid symptoms like irritability, heat intolerance, and diarrhea. Later, after you've had um, repeated recurrent attacking of your thyroid tissue, you'll have hypothyroidism with the corresponding symptoms, cold intolerance, constipation, and fatigue. The thyroid is then of normal size or even smaller if it's fibrotic from all of that inflammation. Another autoimmune disease that has type 4 hypersensitivity in its pathophysiology is multiple sclerosis. There has been some genetic predisposition identified for this. This is an allele that causes multiple sclerosis, HLA-DRB115 allele, as well as the lack of this allele, HLA-AO2 allele. Both of those um, conditions predispose you to multiple sclerosis. Low vitamin D has also been found to be a trigger. Cigarettes, um, some viruses have been associated, EBV and um, HHV6. And essentially here, the target tissue that you're destroying is in the central nervous system. You'll have inflammation, demyelination, and axonal degeneration in the central nervous system. The symptoms of multiple sclerosis include many different neurological symptoms. Usually it starts with something like impaired vision, sometimes also with bowel and bladder function. Other problems include problems with your gaze, problems with your posture, gait, balance, <coughs> depression, memory, and concentration can be there as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Type 1 diabetes is another autoimmune reaction that involves type 4 hypersensitivity. In this case, you have destruction of the pancreatic islet beta cells. So these beta cells produce insulin, and when you destroy those, you become diabetic from lack of insulin. These are your typical diabetes symptoms, polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, so peeing a lot, drinking a lot, eating a lot. Type 1 diabetes typically presents with weight loss and a thin appearance. They might have DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, on their first presentation, and they're typically um, very fatigued, they have poor wound healing, and they have infections in the more severe cases as well. 
Next, there are a bunch of skin disorders, severe cutaneous adverse reactions that result as a, as a result of type 4 hypersensitivity. First one here is DRESS syndrome. The long name for it is drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. This is known to be triggered by anticonvulsants and antimicrobials, as well as HHV-6. And in this disease, you have waxing and waning fever, diffuse rash, facial edema, um, lymphadenopathy, and eosinophilia, as well as some organ inflammation in more severe cases, such as liver inflammation, uh, resulting in hepatitis, and maybe um, right upper quadrant abdominal pain. Steven Johnson syndrome is a, is a very serious infection. It's also caused by anticonvulsants and antibiotics as well as allopurinol. In this disease, you have painful vesicles and bullae that um, affect the skin. You have this Nikolsky sign, and when it's positive, you'll have sloughing of the skin just with like a soft touch. So the skin is like very sensitive and kind of peels off um, in a bit of an um, unpleasant manner. You might also have oral and genital involvement in Steven Johnson syndrome, and the patients can have conjunctivitis as well. Being inflammatory, they might also have flu-like symptoms and fever. Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis exist on a spectrum. In the milder cases, where only less than 10% of the skin is affected, it's Steven Johnson syndrome. In the more severe cases, when it's affecting 30 plus percent of the patient's total skin, it's toxic epidermal necrolysis. And in between that, between 10 and 30 percent, so around 20 percent, <clears throat> it would be like a mixed picture of SJS and TEN. Last one I'm going to briefly mention is acute generalized ex <coughs> exanthematous postulosis. This is also triggered by antibiotics as well as a bunch of other drugs, sulfonamides, quinolones, quinine derivatives, peroxicam, which is an NSAID um, that contains a functional group that triggers this reaction, and diltiazem. The main symptom of this is hundreds of non-follicular sterile pustules in the intertriginous areas. So many skin reactions going on with type 4 hypersensitivity. A lot of them are drug reactions listed here, and others are just antigens that you see in the environment, um, in nature, in chemical products. So a lot of it is skin reactions, contact dermatitis, or more serious inflammatory reactions. It's worth mentioning that a lot of hypersensitivity can be a mixed picture. Rheumatoid arthritis, for instance, was type 2 hypersensitivity mixed in with type 4. So you can have kind of that acute cytotoxic effect, but also that delayed um, longer term effect in rheumatoid arthritis. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis is a mixture of type 3 and type 4. So you'll have immune complex deposition, but also the delayed direct targeting of, um, of, of the target cells with cytotoxic killer T cells. So both of those are mixed pictures. Lastly, a quick note on transplant patients, patients who have had an organ or graft transplant. They can um, have a number of reactions, and two of them in particular have type 4 hypersensitivity involvement. The patient's body can react to the graft, and the graft can react to the patient's body. And both of those can happen in a type for hypersensitivity fashion. So in the case of the patient's body reacting to the graft, that would be an acute reaction. The patient's body would react in, you know, one to three days, and the patient will have fever, deterioration of their condition, they'll have pain over their graft, the graft might swell and be edematous, and the graft will obviously fail if the patient's body is reacting to the graft. So in acute organ transplant rejection, acute graft rejection, the patient's T cells are reacting against the new graft. The opposite happens in graft versus host disease. In graft versus host disease, the graft's T cells are reacting to the patient's native cells. So the patient will have a painful or itchy rash, they can have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, jaundice, and hepatosplenomegaly. So the T cells in both the patient's original tissues and the graft can react to the other one that I just mentioned. So um, kind of goes both ways in terms of organ or traft or graft transplantation. So that's another type four hypersensitivity reaction that's worth knowing.